Joy-Cons are so uncomfortable. There's no way I could play like this. There has to be a better way. Oh, hey. <laughs> you know I slept on that thing last night. Really an uncomfortable mess. Did a number on my back. <laughs> you know, in my experience with sleeping on electronics, you just can't be a good Xbox controller. <laughs> that is comfort bliss. You know, if only it looked like that. Can you imagine that? That's a pretty good idea, isn't it? Okay, first of all, Nefarious, that's my coffee cup. You're drinking my coffee. And second of all, you have no idea what you're talking about. This is why I'm the tech YouTuber, and you're just the guy who sleeps on my couch uninvited. All right, man, suit yourself. You're out of coffee, by the way. Wait! <laughs> Greetings, and welcome to the channel. This is Michaela from Team Retro, where we like retro games and the devices that bring them to us. We're returning to the world of the Nintendo Switch this week with another third-party Joy-Con solution. These are the MobaPad M6 HD Joy-Con controllers and the MobaPad Chi2 Pro controller. In this video, we're going to talk about if these controllers are the Switch upgrade you've been looking for, and we're going to find out if they're worth your hard-earned dollar bucks. So let's dive in and get to work. At time of recording, the M6 HD Joy-Cons are available direct from MobaPad starting at $79.99 and the Pro Controller starts at $59.99. Both of these devices were sent to me by MobaPad for the purposes of this review. As is always required, all opinions are my own, I'm not being paid, and they are not seeing this video before it is published. It's time to hop onto our mount and ride into Spec Town. The M6 HD Joy-Cons have Amiibo support mechanical buttons, HD rumble, and Hall Effect joysticks. You can also swap out the faceplates as well as the D-pad to fit your style of gaming. The Chi 2 has all the same features, minus the ability to switch the faceplate of the controller, but you can also switch the D-pad to be either a plus style or a circle style like an Xbox controller. So we're actually going to go ahead and we're gonna do a live device tour. So I'm actually doing this kind of unscripted. I have a dual cam set up here, ready to go. So let's take a look at these controllers and let's start with the left one here. So we're gonna start with the ZL and ZR. Now these are analog triggers and they are very clicky. Let's go ahead and just take a quick listen here. So a little bit on the louder side, but they're not entirely bad. They're actually fairly easy to deal with. Joysticks are hall sensing joysticks and you have a detachable D-pad here. And this basically allows you to switch between this Xbox style, or if you take a look at this bag here, not only do we have some extra face plates, which we're gonna try in a minute, but we also have this cross style D-pad. Oh, there you go. You gotta give it kind of a hard push to get it to snap in, and then this should go right on top. And so now you have your classic cross style D-pad. If you don't like that, you can take this off. You can take this out just by Pulling up at the notch here, and you can put the circle one back in. The thing with the circle one is you have to put this front panel back on first, and then just kind of push that in until it snaps, and you're good to go. I'm actually going to be using both of these in my testing because I'll probably want to use the D-pad for more retro games, but for some more modern games, this circle setup might actually be a 
bit of a better fit. Down here you have, this is the minus button, you have your screenshot button, and then this is a function button, this is a settings button. Over here on the right Joy-Con, same clicky ZL and ZR, and the buttons are clicky too. Let's go ahead and take a listen to those. Overall, pretty comfortable feeling, actually. I really do like how these face buttons feel. They have that cotton, not cotton candy. What am I talking about? I have candy kind of button feel to it. And I actually kind of really like that. You have the home button and you have the settings button for this side and you have the plus button. And then of course you have these nice textured ergonomic grips on the back. And then you have these programmable buttons and they're not hard to press. Uh, you can assign these to other buttons. Usually I like to do either plus or minus, or I like to do some sort of function of like L and R. It depends on the game that I'm playing. Usually I like these buttons to bring up menus or to access something quickly, mostly so I don't have to reach up here or I don't have to reach up here. It depends all on what type of game it is or what I'm playing. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the replacement plates. Now, these are the same color, but you'll notice that this is more of a octagonal eight-way bump for the joysticks as opposed to the regular circular motion here for these. And again, these are magnetic, so they pop off very easy, and these are very, very easy to swap out. And you can now feel... Like, that's a definite tactile feel, and you can f hear it even, that it's got more of a clickier adjustment to it. Like, more as you have more of a smooth adjustment here, this is clickier. So this might be better for, I don't even know what type of games would work with this. I don't necessarily think that fighting games would be the right use. Maybe shooters. But for the most part, yeah, you have a much louder sound here when rotating versus the smooth feel of rotating with the circle here. I prefer the circle. Most games that I play don't need me to know what cardinal direction I'm in, but if this is something that you need, it is available to you. And you can also get different color fronts. They are on MobaPad's website. They only sent me just the white model, but you can kind of mix and match they have some other colors on the website if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, also of note, the buttons don't come out, so you can't necessarily swap the joystick or the buttons unless you open this up. And there are screws here in the front if you need to access the inside of this. I'm not going to open these, but they do seem to have very easily accessible screws here. So now let's go ahead and put them on the Nintendo Switch. So I'm going to take these uncomfortable official things off here and we're going to go ahead and we're going to slide these on. Now first thing I'm noticing right off the bat is that this is very stiff. Like this is hard to slide on and I don't really know what to make of that. It's just really hard to, oh, see, like it's, I put it up here. It's really hard to take that. Maybe I'm just weak. Okay. Whoa. I almost dropped my switch. You didn't see that. It's really hard to take them off and put them back on. And that's both a good and a bad thing. Like here, if I would put the Joy-Cons on, that slides on easily. It comes off easily. Not a big deal, right? But here, yeah, that's stiff. Now I have another set of controllers here, the QRD Stellars. These don't have that problem. Now I would argue that the MOBA pads are better, but these definitely slide on and off a lot easier. Now these are just as ergonomic. I did a review on these. They are not as customizable. The front plates don't come off, but 
the D-pad does. So you can swap out the D-pad with a cross-style D-pad with these QRDs, and you have pretty similar functionality with the QRDs versus the MOBA pads. I personally, in my testing, I do actually enjoy the MOBA pads a little better. I feel like they're just a little bit more comfortable. I feel like that textured grip on the back is kind of what does it. But if you don't like the stiffness of the Joy-Cons, this might be another option for you. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this on, just like so. And right there, they do show as paired. Now they show up as gray. And a little bit later in the video, I'm gonna see if there's actually a way to change that. All right, let's go into the controllers and sensors and let's change the button mapping. And again, you see those are gray. They're listed as gray Joy-Cons. There might be a way to change that color and I wanna try that. But what I wanna do here is I wanna change B to A. I wanna change Y to B and I wanna change A to Y. And we'll leave X as it is. And the reason I wanna do that is because with this four button layout, it is much easier to play 2D games like World Championships NES Edition. Now, this is obviously a game that is meant more for a B button and an A button. So let's go in and let's let's do one of these challenges here. We gotta hit all five question blocks. Okay, let's go do it. Yeah, these do feel really comfortable. Oh, I did terrible. Should we try that again? Uh, 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 uh. Okay, I just beat my best. Hey, look, I got a pin. So this does have all of the function of a regular Joy-Con, albeit much more comfortable. And in order to change the button mapping, we could just go ahead and reset it. And we're back to normal. So let's close out of NES edition. And then we're gonna play some Zelda. And just in case there's any doubt, it is Thursday, September 26, 2024. This is my legally purchased copy of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. This is my GameStop receipt. So to all you ninjas out there, I declare fair! Yeah, that'll hold up in court. Oh, am I actually gonna get to play as Link? Oh, I get to play as Link for a minute. Holy crap. So yeah, these are pretty fun to play. If I were to say there were any negatives here, it would have to be, I don't like the clicky buttons. I think they're a little bit too clicky. So if you're playing this in bed, you're Significant other might have a few things to say. And I don't necessarily like this setup here. I don't like the clickiness that this gives the Joy-Cons. So I'm kind of going to just not use these. I'm going to keep with the circle ones. But otherwise... Oh, the third thing I don't like is the fact that these are really hard to take off. But... Once you do, hang on, okay. They do function as wireless Joy-Cons. So you can take these off, you can dock your switch, you can mount it, whatever you need to do, you can do it here. That circle style D-pad is awful clicky. Oh, I won. Let's try a couple of uh, Shoryukens, okay. Time to swap out for the cross D-pad. It definitely seems much easier to pull off some of these combos. I would give this a straight nine out of 10 for fighting game compatibility. Uh, I am able to pull those combos off pretty well. Better with this than with this, but it is definitely doable. Now these Joy-Cons don't have a turbo button that I can see. So these settings buttons, are just to map 
to the back paddle. So if I hold this settings button here, that's going to turn on and then I'll press B and then I'll press the back and the light will turn off and then that back paddle will be mapped to B. Now if I want to do this side, then I would hold the settings button for this side. But what happens here with this home button? What happens if I do this? What happens if I hold the home button until that light turns on? Does anything happen? No. Okay. That's just the home button. And then obviously that's just a screen cap button. So no turbo on these, but definitely a comfortable setup. So the other thing I want to talk about is the Pro Controller that they sent me. Now, if I were to compare this to another Pro Controller, which would be the official Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, this feels more premium. It has not as clicky buttons. This are These are very clicky, just like the Joy-Cons. But they also have the back programmable buttons. This has the exact same functionality as the MOBA pad Joy-Cons, but you have it in a Pro Controller setup. And again, you can take the circle pad out and you can replace it with a typical cross style controller. So it took me a minute to figure out how to get the MOBA pad to pair to the Nintendo Switch. You actually have to press this button on the back. This is the sync button. So this controller, I'm actually having a harder time pulling off the combos. All right, now I got a bit of a rhythm down. You have to be a little bit more deliberate with this controller, but I do seem to be able to pull off Hadoukens a little bit more steadily now. Maybe I'm just bad at Street Fighter games. That's That's gotta be it. Nefarious always says I'm bad at games. All right, so I held this button here, which appears to be a turbo button because it shows two bullets, and I pressed Y. So let's see what happens now. Sure enough, this light starts flashing and we are able to turbo. Okay, so this controller does have turbo functions. Now, if we hold this settings mode and it turns purple, I think we press B and then press back. And now if I press this back button, that's registered to B. So that's how you do that. I tried to use the Joy-Con toolkit to change the colors of the Joy-Cons and everything seemed to go well at first, but the settings did not seem to actually save to the Joy-Cons. They were recognized as official Joy-Cons, but must be missing something that is present in the official Joy-Con programming that allows the colors to be saved and changed. This isn't a deal breaker, but it's kind of a bummer. I would have liked to have seen the actual colors reflected on the screen. Now let's start to wrap things up with my final thoughts. This is the most comfortable third-party Joy-Con set to date, beating out the QRD Stellars, the Hori Switchpad Pro, and even the cracked Nitro Deck. The mappable back buttons are easy to use and don't actuate unless you specifically want them to, and the option of a cross style or a circle D-pad on both controller sets is definitely a welcome one. Of course, no device is perfect, so let's look at the negatives. These are mechanical controllers, which means everything is just going to sound loud and clicky as buttons are pressed. Normally, I don't complain about clicking, but these are just a little extra clicky. They're also very stiff when connected to the Nintendo Switch. They won't wiggle around, but they're also very hard to take on and off. I would almost rather put them on, keep them on, and carry an extra controller with me for tabletop or docked mode. And this last negative isn't necessarily about the controllers themselves, but the fact that the Switch 2 is most likely going to be knocking on our doorsteps within the next year or so, and we're just not sure what compatibility that system will have with older Joy-Con hardware. Therefore, if you're considering a Switch 2 when it's released, and you like these controllers, they may become obsolete in the near future depending on what Nintendo has up their sleeve. 
But let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this a device you are considering? Do you have one? And what do you think is the best use case for controllers like this? And please feel free to continue the conversation on the Retro Handhelds and Steam Machine Discords where you can find me hanging out in between videos. And if you want to support the show, like these wonderful people on the screen, you can do so by going to my Patreon page. Links for all of these places are in the description. But that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and please be sure to like and subscribe if this video was helpful to you in any way. Every smash of that button helps the channel grow and allows me to get more content out to you. Until next time, bye for now, and don't stop believing.